I'm sitting here listening to what both of you are saying, and um, I'm asking a question. What does this have to do with Jesus Christ? You know, if it has nothing to do with Jesus Christ, then it's anti-Christ. It's against Christ. It's in place of Christ. Yeah. And this is exactly what Paul was writing about when he said, Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy, through the traditions of men, and after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. What I see with all this stuff, it's not after Christ. And so you've got a whole way of looking at spiritual reality that has nothing to do with Christ. Now, there's a spirituality associated with that, which I think you're going to speak about. The spirituality is, you know, is something that I believe is really no spirituality at all. Because Jesus said in John chapter 15, he said, when the spirit of truth has come, he will testify concerning me. Jesus is the focal point of all of the testimony that's going on. And this has nothing to do with Jesus Christ. I liken it to the example where, you know, you're in a, you're in a theater and there's a solitary actor on the stage. And uh, he's the actor that the spotlight is shining upon. Nobody in the whole auditorium sees anyone else but that actor and the spotlight shining on him. That, in a way, illustrates the work of the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit is there to illuminate the Lord Jesus Christ and make him real to people. And so when you're talking about this, I have a question. What does this have to do with Christ? Nothing. And please elaborate. Sorry. Well, you were talking about the Holy Spirit. Well, in all of these doctrines, the Holy Spirit is totally absent. We have to do something. Mm, I see. And when they've invented all these new doctrines, eschatological doctrines, what they've done is not only taken from the wells of the occult and Gnosticism and the uh, Apocrypha, but they've also gone headlong into mythology. Mm. And uh, Tom Horn, for example, who's one of the biggest purveyors of these teachings, actually believes that all of the ancient uh, gods and goddesses of Rome and Egypt and Greece, that they were real that they exist today that for example Zeus is actually Satan his favorite god is Apollo and I'll discuss that in a minute but with all of these doctrines instead of relying on the Holy Spirit and reading the Word of God in prayer to for a Christian to humbly walk through in the, in the you know path of sanctification what they've done is they they've devised these hyper spiritual uh, warfare that we as Christians, we need to combat these entities that are going to be materializing. And uh, Tom Horn, for example, actually got many of his teachings from the Latin Ring, which became the New Apostolic. Uh, C. Peter Wagner, who's the chief apostle for the New Apostolic Reformation, has a teaching called Strategic Level Spiritual Warfare. He called it uh, warfare prayer. Well, Tom Horn calls it militant prayer. And his militant prayer is the techno-dimensional spiritual warfare. Mm -hmm. So what we have to do is we have to engage in spiritual mapping. We have to identify all of these mythological gods and goddesses in order to be able to combat them. There's one particular doctrine that Tom Horn has that's especially disturbing to me as a Christian. He calls it the gasket heaven. He says that between the throne room of God and then the air where the, where the birds fly, there is a gasket heaven. He calls it the war zone of these entities, the Nephilim, the watchers, the creatures, the mythological gods. He claims that they're able to even prevent my prayer from entering to the throne room of God, mm. and that we have to somehow devise some way of penetrating that portal, that opening that's in this ethereal, parallel universe or multi-dimensional space and we have to do something if we don't learn how to do these techniques we're in trouble that is, he, is he actually saying then that these mythological creatures are being reincarnated or reappearing as space alien deity creatures in the heavenly not only that but they they use a different word they they say reanimate but, for example, I brought up the god Apollo. Tom Horn wrote a book called Apollyon Rising 2012. Mm -hmm. Well, 
Apollo didn't materialize. So now they've revamped the book. Yeah. It's now called Zenith 2016. He's giving him four more years to appear. What he believes and what many of the other teachers believe is that ancient Nimrod, you know, back to the, you know, Babylon, ancient Nimrod was actually one of these Nephilim hybrid mutant creatures. And that he is either going to be through transhumanism tampering, you know, we, we humans have to do something to help now, that we're going to maybe tinker with some dead DNA that they can revivify, or that somehow Satan, through his machinations, is going to have some kind of mating process with a, a human being. I don't ex understand how they can explain this, but that the God Apollo is in the end times, in the last days, and he said it was going to happen in 2012, and it didn't. He will be the Antichrist of Revelation. And they believe that the god Apollo slash Nimrod slash Osiris, who was an Egyptian god, they're all the same entity, that he is actually going to be the Antichrist. So Antichrist to them is going to be one of these mutant hybrid serpent seed creatures. That's how bad it's getting. And they're not looking for the blessed hope of Jesus recovering. Jesus' return, his coming there, looking for the return of these mythological In, space alienized creatures, science fiction, high tech scenario. And that in and of itself is unscriptural because the Lord God has not given us a spirit of fear. Amen. And Amen. I think what this is capitalizing upon is a spirit of fear, but of a sound mind. This isn't the production of sound minds. Well, and they undermine the sovereignty of God. Exactly. Um, one of the teachings, one of the central doctrines underlying this mytholo mythology is called the Divine Council. And Dr. Michael Heiser is one of the, the ones, he has a whole website on this. They take, I think it's Deuteronomy 32.8, and they say, they teach that after the Tower of Babel, that God partioned out his sovereignty to these angels who became corrupt. And they are actually these mythological beings. And so they're sort of running the thing. And that's why we have to engage in these antics to try to defeat these characters. Totally, uh, you know, their God is impotent. He, he is not in control, but, my, you know, our God is. The God of the scripture is totally in control of all things. And none of what they say is true. That's not what the Bible says. And Isaiah the prophet records how the Lord said, I am the Lord God, and my glory I will share with nobody else. 